that's the key here, and that's the message that we actually really want to drive home, is that the RAND probably is going to strengthen more for global factors than domestic factors. There's only so much we can do domestically that's going to alter the course of the RAND. Yes, it's time for Coffee Break Commerce, your business and forex audio fix created by ABSA Corporate and Investment Banking. Welcome to the very first inaugural episode of Coffee Break Commerce, the podcast that deciphers and decodes your most pressing economic and currency issues, all in the time it takes to drink a cup of coffee. Today, we're talking research with the help of Mike Keenan, Principal and Head of Fixed Income and Currency Strategy for ABSA. Hello, Mike, and welcome to this very first episode of this brand new podcast. Good day, Justine, and thanks very much for having me. To start off, the title of today's episode is Why is ABSA so bullish about the RAND? Now, to put this in context for listeners, we're recording at a time when South Africa is only just coming out of one of the harshest COVID-19 lockdowns in the world. In the face of sluggish economic activity and much currency volatility, ABSA is still one of the most bullish or constructive RAND houses in the market, expecting the South African RAND to recover to 15.75 to the US dollar by year end. So Mike, let's please just unpack this. What is the why behind this quite unexpectedly rosy exchange rate outlook? Thanks, Justine. Yeah, I think as you painted quite eloquently, there's a lot of negative news coming through from all sides at the moment. I think if we just take a quick step back, the RAND did weaken dramatically to an all-time low of 1935 back in March when the pandemic was hitting quite harshly. And of course, we had that Moody's downgrade. Since then, the RAND has recovered, got down to sort of the low 16s. And we, as you quite rightly say, think that the RAND can push on a little bit further into year end. And the reasons really revolve around the global environment more than the local environment. Locally, we've got a challenging fundamental backdrop. We've got weak growth. We've got a lot of debt. And those risks, I think, are reflected already in the currency. But internationally, we have two big themes at play. The dollar is coming under pressure across the board. And number two, we've seen commodity prices rallying. So the RAND by default should benefit from a weaker dollar environment. And because we export a lot of commodities, we would also benefit from any boon in, in commodity prices. And I think the dollar is coming under pressure, partly because of all the dollars that are printing across the globe, all the stimulus measures that's been injected by the likes of the Fed, the ECB, the Bank of Japan, etc., So there's a lot of supply of dollars. And secondly, all that stimulus that's coming through from the central banks is also very good for commodities because hopefully that money will be redirected towards a lot of infrastructure spending. You also have said that the the RAND is undervalued, is 8% undervalued. Tell us about that. Yes, exactly. So that's important. We also have a couple of models that we look at in, at the bank. One of them is purchasing power parity. So that's we're looking at the RAND and equating it to whether or not the currency is fairly valued based on inflation differentials. So when inflation is rising rapidly in a particular country, the exchange rate needs to weaken in order for that good to be competitive in the international markets. So the exchange rate is kind of the the adjusting mechanism for any country that's experiencing higher levels of inflation. Now, in South Africa, inflation has been coming down, much like in most parts of the world. Hence, the RAND doesn't need to be as weak. And there again, currencies like the dollar seem to be very overvalued on a purchasing power parity or inflation differential perspective, whilst the RAND is about 8% undervalued based on that metric. The second valuation that we look at is we compare the RAND to other currencies with similar characteristics. So as I said a little bit earlier, we export a lot of commodities. So we tend to track other commodity currencies like the Australian dollar, the Brazilian rail very closely. 
So we factor what's happening in to, to other currencies, and we look at other currencies that have also got high interest rates. South Africa is a haven for those investors that want to chase high interest rates because our interest rates are, are comparatively high. So we also compare the RAND's performance in this model to high-yielding currencies. And that model is telling us that the RAND should currently be at 1550. So our forecast of 1575, I still believe, is giving investors sufficient compensation for the risks because actually fair value for us is that the RAND should be in the mid-15 range currently. Tell us more about what this means. Essentially, it means that, that the RAND is cheap. So we think it's competitive, which should start attracting more exports into the country. And in fact, we've seen that. Last month, we had a record trade balance that came through. So on the one hand, when you've got a, an undervalued or weak exchange rate, it means that the stuff we export, the commodities, the cars, anything along those lines, should actually look quite attractive to, 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 to foreign investors and consumers. And the flip side to that is also, because our rand is so cheap, it's very expensive for us to import those plasma or high-definition televisions from abroad, so we import less. And both of those forces mean that your trade balance improves, your current account deficit gets narrower, and that should in itself help the rand to recover because when you import in a lot and you export in very little, then just the flow of trade counts against your exchange rate. And that's what's happened in many previous years in South Africa where we've run very large trade deficits, large current account deficits, and, and that means that the currency has to weaken to sort of compensate for those those negative trade flows. And that's because of the bigger picture situation with oil prices due to COVID going down and commodities going up. Is that right? Correct. Correct. And, and I think, Justine, that, that's, that's the key here. And that's, a, that's a, the message that we absolutely really want to drive home is that the RAND probably is going to strengthen more for global factors than domestic factors. There's only so much we can do domestically that's going to alter the course of the RAND. If we make you know, structural reform measures that are followed through by the finance minister and the president, that's going to improve sentiment and, and that will cause the RAND to strengthen. But even if that doesn't happen, I think global forces are so powerful when it comes to a liquid emerging market currency like the RAND that those things can easily mask some of the lingering South African challenges. And, and I think that's Especially as South Africans, we, we often get caught up. You started the interview by discussing all these negative sort of domestic factors and challenges. And at home, we think, well, given that environment, it's got to be all bad for the RAND. But we often forget that globally, the situation is starting to look a little bit better, still challenging, but there are green shoots coming through. And I think it's all stemming from the fact that people are going back to work, number one. And number two, a lot of money has been thrown at this problem internationally. To end off, tell us what all of this means for our listeners. So, like you mentioned right up front, Justine, you know, we are the most bullish house on the RAND at present. Our forecasts are also well below the forward curve. In other words, the cost of hedging yourself against any kind of currency risk. Our rates are well below where those hedging costs are sitting. So for us, for clients that are export orientated, we think the RAND is going to get stronger from here. So we think that those those clients should actually be taking advantage of the weak exchange rate environment to bring some of those dollars home, okay? To bring them, convert them into RANDs and facilitate their sort of local operations. The importer clients, on the other hand, we think they must be careful about not not panicking in the current environment. We know the news flow is bad, but we don't think you should be going out and buying dollars in this current environment. We think you will get better levels to buy your dollars, as I say, end of the year, first quarter of next year. And that's why for those 
those clients, we think it's better to to wait as long as possible before you actually buy hard currency. We have traditionally been quite negative about the currency in the last few years, but the rand is now weakened. We think there's more than enough premium in the currency to compensate for the risk. So, so we now think in a cyclical currency like the rand is, it's time to now hold off and wait for the next dip in the cycle. We, we're not in the dip. We, we don't believe it yet. It's been really interesting. I'm so glad to have had these insights with you. And that's all, I think, for today's Coffee Break Commerce, created for you by APSA Corporate and Investment Banking. Thank you, Mike Keenan, for your insights. And thank you, listeners, for joining the conversation. Please do talk to us and send us your thoughts and FX questions to international banking services at absa.co.za. Let us know what questions you'd like future podcasts to focus on. And please share this episode with interested friends or colleagues. Join us next time for another Coffee Break Commerce.